Right, before I t start today's section, right, I just want to say thanks to the video from Programming Percy on mastering web sockets with Go. Inside, there are a lot of concepts that um, I learned on how to properly make a real-time chat applications. And today's the topic will also be um, one of the subtopics that Programming Percy has mentioned on the heart beating. So heart beating, technically it means that we are the server will send a spatial message called ping message to the client as an interval. For example, every 10 seconds uh, we send a message or 9 seconds we send a ping message and we the server will expect the client to come back with a pong message within a certain interval. If I don't receive, if the server don't receive the pong message, it means that the client has lost connection so that we can say that it's not alive anymore and then we proceed to close the connection for with the client. So that's how the ping pong mechanism works and to me I think it's a very important uh, concept because um, understanding that the client has already been disconnected is just as important as um, getting the client connected to the socket. We also will do some refactoring afterwards but I will start, I'll start with the ping pong interval first and then proceed with uh, refactoring some code to fix some mistakes I've done uh, last time especially related to the context. So let's get started. It's actually a very simple thingy. Firstly is we want to go to the client that is uh, specifically in charge of the ping pong mechanism just copy the var here and set two variables. One is a pong wait time um, and another is so it's going to be time dot second times 10 and another is a ping interval with a time dot second that is less than the pong wait time so that our ping uh, interval is always there will be always a ping that is sent by the server between the time frame of time frame of 10 seconds for example so pong can never be the wait time can never be um, shorter than the ping if not you will keep disconnect the server uh, sorry uh, with the client okay so first thing is in our write message instead of writing it um, yeah from here we have a ticker Aside from the writing a normal message, we will also write our ping message right here. So ticker is a sort of like a set interval in JavaScript, but it's written in this way, new ticker. So I create a ticker instance with the duration that we set. So from our case, it's a ping interval. So this ticker will uh, will, 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 will ch pass a data to the ch its ticker channel called ticker.c and whenever we receive the message it will be every ten uh, every nine seconds every nine seconds um it will call this uh you send a data some data to the ticker.c and then this data will then be uh we can do some any kind of uh, function or operations um whenever we receive the data from the channel so every nine seconds what we want to do is we want to write message so we can combine it with a uh, if statement error not equal to new then we handle the error but here is a C indicating the current client instance its connection write the message call the ping message the message type has to be a ping message if not then the client will not know that they need to revert back with a pong and here is going to be a empty byte like this If error is not equal to new, it means that I failed to write a message. I'm going to say logger dot error and then just return. This return statement will cause the entire go routine to be terminated and then trigger the default function to close the connection and remove the client from the client list from the manager. Now we have done with setting the ping message interval 
if there's no error you're going to print line so remember that whenever we send a spatial type like p message it will not shown in the network tab one so we just use a normal console log to to do a debugging next we head over to the read messages um, function to set up our time out like uh, the pong wait time first thing first is connection dot set read that line equals to time dot now dot add this time plus the pong wait time Okay, so our we will we will set the deadline equals to the current time plus ten seconds to wait for the uh pong message before it returns any kind of uh connection loss signal. So this is um the just for initialization wise because uh, as we see like read messages will be initialized once um when the any kind of socket connection comes in so we will set the deadline once and every time when we receive a ping, uh, a ping message oh sorry uh, any time when re we receive a pong message from the client then we will s reset the deadline with latest message uh, late the latest time time uh, plus the 10 seconds like this so there is a method call set pong handler Whenever we receive a, a pong, then um, oh. we will do the exact same thing. And here is when we receive a pong. Right, that's it, that's all. So, three parts. The first one is set interval send a consistent p message from the server to the client second is set a deadline before uh, as an initialized initial time where if i don't receive any message from the client at that time then i will consider that as a lost connection and third set a handler whenever i receive the client's pong message i reset the deadline so that i increase its um, expiry time like a connection expiry time to a later time and expect to have another ping message coming in shortly so if we restart the server and we go to the client reload it we don't see any changes but if we head to the console log uh, I don't know what is this about but yeah you can see that um, ping pong is always there every 10 seconds one so we'll send a ping client responds with a pong and so on and so forth it will be like infinitely using this to keep the connection alive well that's um i would say that's all for today's additional mechanism uh, setting up and after this i will do some refactoring uh and try to explain what i what mistake i did for the context so let me just take a take a sweet. I've been talking for too long. Um, okay. Right. First thing first, context dot background. This method will always create an empty context. Just take it as like a section or something. I mean like uh something that's not supposed to have many instances one especially when i want to do like when the context is ended when like we want to um close all the go routines for this uh, client already uh, etc etc it's not supposed to be duplicated one uh let me let me think about that is it true uh, the things that i'm saying 
um, let's check this um, client list event channel okay interesting um, yes that's true the things I'm saying is true okay so context of background can only be created at the high top level which is the main function right now and it's not supposed to be created multiple instances of a context and they will just simply mess up my code okay so first thing first that I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a context dot background but it's not the basic context it is a context with cancer so context with cancer will return a context instance but with a spatial function called cancel and this cancel function can then be used to call inside the defer function so that we will signal a cancel signal to all the go routines that listen to the context channel context dot done channel specifically for example, when we see the context dot background here, last time I did like this. Whenever the context background signal the done, I terminate the go routine, right? But this is this is not correct. The correct way should be I need to pass in the context as a parameter and then use the context from there instead of using this method because the context of background remember it will always create a new empty context so whatever things that should signal like from the top level will never affect so this code will never be reached and the consequence is that there might be memory leak when the function the main function is closed all right um what else do I want to do? Okay, so context. We have the equal context and also the context. So now, refactoring is the logger will, will going to be the equal context, and then here instead of context dot background, it will be ctx dot done. Right, and then the right message will expect to see the context as well. So basically, just pass every context as a parameter to the children, like this, and then go to the uh, our top level to function like this. Return message dot handle c with a ctx like this. Okay. So context dot background don't want that. Even in the context dot background don't want that. that's all so what I did was I create one single context of background and then that is reused across all the code that I'm using I'm writing um, regardless it's a go routine or it is websocket handlers yeah to make things consistent and to make sure that uh, it works as usual all right so that's all for the second refactoring uh, let me think if I want okay my final refactoring that I want to do today is for the right message right remember that the relationship between objects which I prefer a client means a user this user is not supposed to know the information of other users one although it can like code wise the mistake that I do here is that when I channel uh, when I receive a text coming out from my client like user A for example it actually has information of other clients and it will broadcast the message to them which is not what I want to me the better way of doing this is make the responsibility handled by our manager for example I use a c.manager Okay, uh, like this in the right message. Uh, we do a read message first. For example, when we receive a message from the client, 
we, we instead of directly channel it to to send the message we will s ask our manager like this manager dot say um write message with a string msg and the channel name is general i think it's general right uh yes it's general the chat room name and then error not equals to new um write an error return so the manager will be in charge of channel the message instead of the client so that uh, I don't need to loop the client list inside my write. My write here, we can just do a simple client.con.write message like this. So I can do like this, c.con.write message. I know that the message is for this client and then I will return if I encounter any error. Besides, the problem is, okay, this list, this looping will then be handled by our write message manager, right? So let's go to the manager and implement the write message function. Okay, this is not manager, come on. A function m manager write message and the uh, message is string and also we have a uh, chat room is a string as well and it will return an error if got error all right and next I will loop the client list if client what happened to my okay I'll look my client list if client dot chat room not equal to the chat room that I want to send then I'll skip the client if not I'll write the message in instead of writing a message right if not I will then use the pass the data to the message client message channel like this. Okay, and then at the end we'll be returning a new. Okay, like this. Okay, so manager will write a message and then the message will then be passed over to the client to write itself like the message right the message itself by doing this i do not mix together the responsibility of a client to manage other clients they don't need to reload everything will work exactly the same all right so that's all for the setup oh yeah anyway that's all for the setup now um i will do probably do some ui um changes so that we can have a proper chat room instead of like like this like this one um in the near future but that's all for today thanks for watching see ya